Thank you all so much for coming. Um, it's a real honor to be here to share the look of silence with you. I'm sorry that the protagonist, the main character of the film, Adi Ruku, cannot be with us today. He's been traveling with us and with the film until just a couple weeks ago, but is home at the moment having a break. Thank you to the Busan Film Festival. Thank you to Jin Park. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for coming. ね、ちょっと気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、気になって、
물어주신 질문 중에서 답변이 안된 부분이 있어서 그런 중에서 좀 여쭙고 싶습니다. 어, 국제사회의 인도네시아의 그 홀로코스트를 고발하기 위해서 영화를 만드신 것 같은데 이런 영화 제형식을 통해서 첫 번째 영화가 성공을 거뒀기 때문에 그 이후에 또 방금 보이셨던 그 손바닥 위에 어, 그 나비 코쿤인가요 그게? 여하튼 희망을 상징하는 걸로 저는 느꼈는데 희망이 자라나고 있는지 특히 두 번째 어, 영화가 또 나와서 이제 국제사회로부터 많은 관심을 받고 있는데 앞으로 인도네시아에서 영화가 돌릴 수 있을지 그리고 어, 인도네시아에서 어, 역사 바로 세우기가 시작될 수 있는 어, 가능성을 현재로서 어떻게 보는지 그리고 감독으로서 자기 영화가 어, 인도네시아에 미치고 있는 영향에 대해서 또 어떻게 판단하는지 그리고 나아가서 앞으로 또 어, 지속적인 세 번째 영화의 계획, 계획은 있는지 이렇게 여쭤보고 싶습니다. 정리하자면 어, 평가와 어, 인도네시아 내부에서의 상영 가능성 그리고 앞으로의 계획에 대해서는 어떻게 보십니까? 그 전에 이제 질문도 있으십니까? I think, um, first, thank you so much for your kind uh, remarks. I think that these films are also about something universal, about what, in the case of The Look of Silence, about what does it mean, what does political violence do to the human spirit? What does it mean to survive? What does it mean to grow old when you're so terrified that you can never talk about the source of your trauma? What does that do to a human body? And in other ways, the act of killing is about something, e things that are equally universal, and I'm sure that is why they have resonated around the world. If they were films about Indonesia per se, if they were journalistic films, they would not have traveled like this. Um, the, we, we could not release the film in Indonesia commercially the way we have in other countries because to put a film in cinemas in the normal way in Indonesia you have to first submit it to the censorship board and we thought the film would be, was, possi was likely to be banned talking about the act of killing and if it's banned that becomes an excuse for paramilitary groups or the police or the army to, to physically attack screenings and beat people up or worse. So to avoid that, we set up a whole infrastructure of community screenings, some of which have had 600, 800, 1,000 people. There have been thousands of screenings of the film across the country. Then we made the film available in its Indonesian language copy for free for download and on YouTube in Indonesia. And the film has been downloaded or, or seen online millions of times. The film has, I think it's fair to say, catalyzed a transformation in how Indonesia talks about its past. So the government, uh, of, so the media in Indonesia and the public are now able to talk openly about the genocide for the first time in great depth and also to discuss its present day legacy of corruption and thuggery and violence and fear. That in a sense, the film has opened this space for the, uh, for the political activism necessary to, re, to, gen, to challenge the rule of the gangsters and the thugs who run the country still in many ways. The look of silence will come into that space that's already opened and provide, first of all, a vision of how urgently Indonesia needs something like truth, reconciliation, a revision of the national history curriculum in schools, and healing. And I think through the dignified and humane examples of Adi and of the daughter in The Look of Silence who apologizes on her father's behalf, the film shows Indonesians from all political backgrounds that this is possible and necessary, especially the younger generation. And finally, no, I, do not, I will not make a third film, and I'll tell you why. I see the look of silence, the act of killing and the look of silence as almost like two terms in a dialectic. You have a thesis and an antithesis. And the synthesis is the future. And that belongs to the people of Indonesia. Mm.
so th I started this film with no money and the early footage that Adi's watching, I had a scholarship to do a PhD and I just used that to go myself and film that with a handy cam, yeah. which was worse than even your iPhone camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then all of the, and then gradually, first there was academic money from the United Kingdom, and then the Danish Film Institute came in, and European broadcasters and NGOs, and the most important thing for both of these films was that I had final cut on everything. So even The Act of Killing, we made a two hour shorter version for American cinemas. Even that, I had final cut. And I never work in any situation where I do not have final cut. Okay. So because what would you like? because I the edit of a film is an ethical question. And so I cannot give my cut, and which is to give my responsibility to my participants, to somebody else. Sorry, I can get it. Because how you edit a documentary is always okay. ethical. So you yes, cannot yes. give that ethical responsibility to a broadcaster or to a, an investor. Exactly. Right? Uh, That's a betrayal of your characters. Exactly. I totally I love your film. I've never seen anything like this before. And I've been your fan since last year when I saw Act of Killing. And I'm such a huge fan. And it's a pleasure to meet you here today. Um, I have a question about access. Um, so when Addy first uh, got to meet with perpetrators, well, you've introduced them to him to the perpetrators, and they would give testimonies. And while they give out testimonies, at one point they, it seemed like they felt some kind of, they felt threatened. Yeah. Um, so after shooting or after you know finishing wrapping up that scene, were there any like threats? Did you get any threats to like uh, erase that footage? Um, or I was, I was wondering when you would get like locked access before you shoot or after you shoot? So, so first of all, I'd like to say that it was Adi who said to me he wanted to meet the perpetrators. And I said at first, I, I, I first said no because it sounded too dangerous. And then he explained why as he tells his mother in the film that he wants to find a way to live side by side with them as human beings and maybe to forgive them if they can admit what they did was wrong. And I then thought, how can we do this safely? So, oh, we'll do it with pizza. He shot these cut, and I realized that because we had, I, I, I made this film after editing The Act of Killing, but before releasing it. So I realized all of these perpetrators are aware of the production of the act of killing because it was famous but they haven't seen it yet so because i knew once we released the act of killing i could not safely return to indonesia so i thought okay they think that i'm close to the head of the, the national head of police the head of the paramilitary organization the vice president the governor so they will have to they will not they will have to think twice. They will have to think before they attack us. They won't attack us right away, physically, because they won't want to upset their superiors who they think are my friends, because they hadn't seen the film yet. So that was the basis for being able to film these confrontations safely. But we still took many precautions, like having a separate car, a getaway car, so that we could escape without being followed. Um, bringing only a Danish crew, Adi would have no ID, so that if we got arrested, they wouldn't be able to figure out he, who he was before we got help from our embassy. And having his whole family and my, the rest of my crew at the airport packed and ready to evacuate. So we were afraid always. And we shot also, we knew we had to shoot the confrontations very quickly, and starting with the lowest ranking ones and working our way up the chain of command. And we knew that uh, we also discussed from the outset that if we really do this, Adi's family would have to move. And we planned that over the last one year very closely with the whole family, making sure that they go to much better schools, they get to a much more supportive and less frightening community. But it is a terrible thing that they should have to move when all they want to do, all Adi's trying to do, is to forgive the man who killed his brother. And, and none of the perpetrators ever made us erase footage, but they did, uh, oh, several of them called the police as we were finishing the shoots, and we would, we would have to deal with that. Indonesia가 지금 이번 대선 때 야당 그 초코이가 대통령이 당선됐는데 
우리 같은 경우도 야당이 됐을 때 김대중 대통령 이 있을 때 국가적 차원에서 그 과거사 규명과 진실 화 위원을 했거든요. 네네네. 혹시 인도네시아에서도 네. 그 조코이 대통령 정당에서 그게 이루, 이루어지고 있는지 궁금합니다. No, the ruling party didn't recently change. The president changed. The president changed. And in fact, the, the, there, there is not a single ruling party anymore since the end of the Suharto dictatorship. But apart from the president, the entire parliament or house of representatives is dominated by oligarchs who have made their money by stealing and, by, and, through, human, and through intimidation and theft. And if the new president, who's much better, has any chance of doing good things, Indonesian people will have to organize a, sponta a progressive grassroots base for him, or else he has to depend on the killers, just like all the other presidents. You mean the majority of the Congress, whose house are still, they are the people who it's are exploited. Gotten, it's gotten much worse. 영화 안에서 아디는 한 번도 이렇게 자기 감정을 아주 분명하게 표출하거나 분노하지도 않고 눈물 흘리지도 않거든요. So in Indonesia, this movie has not yet come out. It's only had press screenings. Its premiere will be after the inauguration of the new president. Uh, it will, it's, it's only a month old, it will, and it'll start screening in late November, in early November. So, um, Adi is, Adi is very, indeed, very calm and empathetic, and the, his emotions are quiet. He's like his mother, in many ways. At the end of the film, when his mother cries, that was the first time she's cried out loud since her son died. And Adi is very similar. At the scene at the riverbank, when, when he goes down with Kamat to the river, he cried there. And he and after and after every screening in Venice, Telluride and Toronto, after the audience would clap for him, after watching the film, he would go on stage, or even before he goes on stage, he would cry for a long time, like 10 minutes. And that would be half of our Q&A would be Ad waiting for Adi to stop crying. I just wanted to repeat that again at the beginning, sorry. <laughs> I feel like the power of film is to hold a mirror up to ourselves. And we look in the film and we see ourselves. And often we are seduced or invited to see very painful aspects of ourselves that we're normally too afraid to look at, too afraid to talk about, too afraid to think about. And suddenly, in the film, we see some aspect of ourselves that we know is true, but haven't wanted to admit. And that's, I think, a very important moment, because that's the point where we can start talking about mm -hmm. problems that we couldn't talk about before. And that's the beginning of change. That makes possible activism. That makes possible, uh, that makes possible a process where we solve the problems that we need to solve. So, and film can do that for each of us personally, because it, it's a very intimate art form, and it can do that at the broadest political level in terms of an entire nation's history, for example. Thank you. Thank well, you very much.